the only people it would affect, I guess, is if you're growing up in a Christian household and your parents are keeping Great American Family on all day. But if that's the case, then I think you have other problems. Yeah, that's a brain dead family. Uh, yeah, you're living with Carrie's mom. Okay, so <laughs> welcome to Keep It, Cricket Media show about pop culture and politics and what happens when they smack into each other at an alarming speed. I'm your host, Ira Madison III, I'm a television writer and Fallout Boy fan. I'm Louis Fertel, I'm a TV writer and Jane Fonda historian. Let's get into it. And we're back. For the Great American Family Podcast, I'm Iron <laughs> Madison III. <laughs> okay, was that app just formed the other day? I'm Louis Fertel. We're talking about Candace Cameron Bure culture right now. It's a network. Um, yeah, it exists. And it exists. In an interview with the Wall Street Journal magazine, she said she would focus on, quote, traditional marriage and Christmas movies on her new cable network, Great American Family. Earlier this year, the 46-year-old said she would be moving on from the Hallmark Channel to focus on family and faith-filled programming. Here's what I have to say. I don't care if Candace Cameron wants gay people in her movies. And why do gay people care? What would we do in those movies? Tell me the characters we would play. I feel like we would, you know, you know the bury your gaze motif? I feel like that would, you know, continue on on this network. The first um, Hallmark-esque slasher movie where it's, yeah, yeah we'll put you in there. <laughs> <laughs> she really is a particularly vile person though there's something about the way she talks where it's like oh like fright like real um i don't want to say stepford wives but like just the blankness on her face as she's like actually gay people are bad and when she had all that heat for jojo siwa so and if you're jojo's enemy come on right no she's She's somebody that my my aunt would call Punkin. You can't be enemies with Punkin. There are three JoJo's that I protect with my life. Oh, let's hear them. Siwa. Yes. The JoJo. Uh, been on our podcast, JoJo. And Mojo JoJo. Oh, I was going to say, I couldn't think of the third one. Uh, yeah. I have a cousin, Josephine, who goes by JoJo. And it's always seemed like a cartoon character. I wish she would just go by Josephine. We don't have to tell her this. <laughs> She'll hear this. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm really putting it out there. I'm out in a limb. Uh, no, I'm putting this out there as my holiday keep it. Um, I just feel like, listen, if it were the 90s or something and, you know, a studio head was like, I don't want these faggots in my films. Like, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Be angry. But it is 2022. There are so many fucking networks out there at this point. Who cares? Right. In a way, there should be a homophobic corner somewhere. I mean, that's representative to somebody. Um, and also just the words like, what's the name of the channel again? Family? Great American Family, which is G-A-F, which is fag backwards. Which we love for them. Uh, <laughs> but Great American Family just has that creepy Family Research Council vibe. You know, that, yeah. that homophobic run thing by that guy, Tony Perkins, whose name is Tony Perkins, like the gay actor Tony Perkins. Mm, yeah, and it's, I don't know, the only people it would affect, I guess, is if you're growing up in a Christian household and your parents are keeping Great American Family on all day. But if that's the case, then I think you have other problems. Yeah, that's a brain dead family. Uh, yeah, you're living with Carrie's mom, okay? so <laughs> Who's still with us? Piper Laurie. I believe in her 90s now. Yeah. Um, anyway... That's how I feel about Candace Cameron Burr. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, wait, also one other thing. I made a tweet about her, and there are too many people who do not know that her brother is Kirk Cameron. What planet are we on? No one thing in this life. Of course they are related. <laughs> they have I the same like... credo, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I feel like if you, unless you're specifically our age... After a certain point, they stop doing things together. Right. And also, I would, if you're younger than I am, I would actually be kind of surprised if you knew who Kirk Cameron was. Like, you basically would have to grow up in a fundamentalist household and watch those, like, horrible Left Behind movies he made or something. Because it's not like Growing Pains is on Peacock or whatever. Or if it is, I don't know why you'd watch it. Yeah. But I will say, he, he's a great comedic actor. 
Kirk Cameron? In what? Candace? She's not. Oh, I no. think just on Growing Pains. He, and, I thought he was oh, great oh, on oh, Growing right, Pains. Right, right. Candace, however, was, I mean, no. No. <laughs> ain't, ain't nobody nominated for a damn thing on Full House. You're nominated <laughs> for Death Row, if anything. Yeah. You know what the house is full of? Razzies. <laughs> <laughs> Also, remember, again, and like you would say like the most dignified member was Lori Laughlin, And then, of course, what happened to her? Who's like the reigning like is Andrea Barber the uh, uh, the, the grand dame of Full House? Um, let's see. I mean, that's Kimmy Gibbler for all those who yeah. don't refer to her by her real name, as you should. Well, we, we lost Bob Saget, unfortunately. Oh, true. Um, true. So he has an esteem. And a, uh, yeah. John Stamos. Hot, but you know what? I am team Rebecca Romaine. Yeah. Something about Jean, John Stamos to me, lightly dangerous energy. I don't know. Mm, um, like he juggled knives on set or something. No, it has like a kind of like, um, first of all, wants to be funny. And then mm-hmm. secondly, like th- th- there's just like a, a, a try hardy kind of thing there that doesn't mesh well with the the hot, dignified thing we usually think of him as or that the mm. popular imagination about him. Well, Jody Sweeten did say that um, Great American Family sucks, which for not including also, gays. Jody Sweeten, so. re- recovered addict, which mm. um, and seemingly rad person seems extremely normal. Yeah, she like she looks she looks like pretty chill. And yeah. then of course we have um, the Olsons. And sometimes I think about them. Um, yeah, I me- I was in the a production of The King and I in high school, and I remember. I almost considered ditching the final rehearsal to go see New York Minute because we were actually really obsessed with that movie coming out at the time, and now there's no cultural imprint. So instead, I went to rehearsal and saved my standing in Lamont High School Theater. And now I've not seen that movie, and I don't know how Andy Richter was as a comedic sidekick. Here's what I want to say, um, and this is, this is going to be a bit controversial, Okay. You know what I think one of the most basic things is standing the Olsen twins. Right. What did they do? Like, and I get it. Like at a certain point they became very chic and fashionable in New York and represented, you know, like smoking cigarettes and diet Coke culture. Right. But I think we've moved on past that. Right. Stop it. That to me is very of the, uh, Michael K. D-listed era. That was that yeah. was a fun take in the year of our Lord two thousand and nine, and you know, great. But if she, you sit down next to me talking about some Olsen twins, I'm like, let me get up. Right. <laughs> also, it's like now now there's a third Olsen that we're more concerned with. So let's just yes, move the conversation Elizabeth over to Elizabeth Olsen. Her. Okay, yeah. Lizzie the esteem Olsen. Olsen. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, putting Lizzie's back on the map. Right. Yeah. Not since. Borden, uh, who that spoke to me. <laughs> First the haircut, then, you know, the work. I was going to say, like, the Lizzie Bennett Diaries. Oh, that too. That too. I forget that we call her Lizzie sometimes, yes. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, and, of course, Kaplan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And um, that one Lizzie, um, the, who's always dizzy, you know, Miss Lizzie. Oh, right, yes. And of course, Lizzie the Beanie Baby, <laughs> the blue speckled lizard thing. Uh, I don't remember much about Beanie Babies, to be honest. Oh, my God. I'm from the southwest suburbs of Chicago. That's like, that, that's, well, me, that's my culture. That's me doing the Italian hands. A Beanie <laughs> Babies. Yeah. Uh, yes. We had Beanie Babies in the house, and at some point, I did try to collect them from McDonald's. Uh, but it's like, I, ne- I don't know any of their names. No. Well, okay. Well, those are my friends, so watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> 